My name is Erin Bradley. I'm a teacher at Brian Evan Primary School. This is a school in South Africa. We've been teaching coding to learners for about four years. To do this, we've been using Purple Mash as a tool. I hope it'll give you some idea about the importance of experimenting and exploring using a sort of dialogue to explore how to create a story. All it takes is imagination to see the possibilities. In this purple mesh activity, I have a yellow repeat loop, and that repeats itself five times, writing up five different stories. We've added three printer screen blocks with an underlining using the continuation of the equal sign. And it reads, the mountain was large and loomed over the lake. And then it's got the girl looked at the big fence. So I'm going to add in further details using the random word function and a whole lot more. Let's go to the JavaScript. Click over there. And here you have the JavaScript of the for loop. I'm just going to add some open spaces over here. And I'm going to write some comments with that forward slash. This is JavaScript. So that is a comment. I've just written a comment in there that would not be read as code. Let's create a variable. So I'm going to type VAR and watch how everything goes red. This indicates an error in our code. So if I put two forward slashes in front of that, that line has been commented out and it is understood to be a comment. So random word, round bracket, semicolon. And we know that we are dealing with a comment here. Everything is still white. And I'm going to type in here adjective because I'm going to use a random word function to find an adjective. Now, we all should know that an adjective describes a noun. So we're going to also use the random word function, round brackets. And in here, we're going to type a noun surrounded by single speech marks. OK, so if I take those two forward slashes away, everything, the background remains white. We know there is no error in our code. So the variable x is a random adjective, adjective with a random noun. And this will be the same throughout our loop, throughout the loop. You can see everything's color coded. The light brown indicates that we're dealing with a comment. Now, I want to find an adjective that's going to describe that mountain in my story. So I'm going to just add a line in here and I'm going to just comment it out a variable and we'll call this one y equals and I'm going to make it an adjective as well. So I'll just copy this code, select, right click, copy. I'll just take that away and paste. Let's get rid of those double forward slashes and you can see now it's a line of code. Y is just a random word, which is an adjective. So I'm going to add it in here to describe the mountain. The, and you can see everything's gone red again, plus, and I'm going to add in Y, because Y is the adjective which we're going to use to describe this mountain. Now I'm going to put a single speech mark and put a space over there. Mountain, I'm going to put in lowercase. Play, and you can see here it reads the quiet mountain. Every single time it's the quiet mountain, the quiet mountain in each of my five stories. But computer science is about experimenting. So let's copy this and we're going to paste it inside the loop. So I'm going to just bring in a line over here and play that. And here you can see the loud mountain, the second one, hard mountain, soft mountain, quiet mountain. So it's changing. Our computer is now choosing a random word adjective. And we have called this the variable y. And y changes every time we run through the loop. Now, what will happen if we use y to describe the girl? So we put in a plus. I'm going to type y over here. And then plus again. And we've got that space in front of girl. So let's play that. Let's look at the different versions of y. We've got soft, hard, small, large. And the last story had large as the adjective. So you can see that every time it loops through, it gives Y is the same. I'm going to try to create another version of Y. So I've selected that. I've pressed Control C. And I'm going to just bring in a line over here. And I'm going to Control V. So I'm going to bring another Y, another creation of Y. We are asking our code to recreate Y. So the Y that was used to describe the mountain is going to be different to the Y that describes the girl. You can see smelly mountain, smelly girl, smelly mountain, then it goes large girl, 
soft mountain, large girl, hard mountain, soft girl, quiet mountain, soft girl. So there is a different adjective every time. In this way, we're bringing a bit of variation in the sense that our adjective changes every time. And how did we do that? By just giving a different version of why. Now, my story is going to be about an animal. So I need to bring an animal into the story. So I'm going to just copy this line of code because I just want to get another sentence. I'm going to bring in a blank line and let's print it and line up everything nicely. That's fine. And now we're going to make changes and we're going to indicate that the girl was looking at some animal. Now we need to describe the girl. So I'm going to take this random word adjective function and I'm going to place it. I'm going to copy and I'm going to place it just in front of girl so that, it, that we have some word chosen by the computer to describe the girl. The random word adjective function will do this for us. And you can see, look, it says large girl. So we have a word that describes the girl. But we also want to bring in an animal. So we're going to add that in as well. We're just going to indicate that the girl was watching the animal, an animal of choice. So let's just, the girl was, so we'll go was, let's take at out. The girl was watching the, and then we're going to add in the animal. And I want to create a variable. So I'm going to type in VAR. I'm going to type VAR, VAR, and we'll call this animal. So we're going to now name our variable equals a random word. You might have noticed that I've used a capital V, random word. And we're going to use animal because we want to get an, an animal. But I created this variable with a capital V. Now we know that's a mistake. So that indicates everything's red. Now if we want to see if this line has a mistake. We know by changing the name, nothing happens. So we're going to comment out that line to see whether there's an error in it. So forward slash, forward slash, and you can see everything goes white, indicating that's where the error is. So we must make that a small v for creating our variable. Variable animal equals random word animal. And we're going to add it into our story over here. Put a plus, and then we type in our name of our variable. And that's correct. If we go ahead and play this, the animal chosen in each case is the monkey, watching the monkey. So you can see that's what we've got. We've got a monkey in our story. But let's describe our monkey. So let's bring in an, a y, which is our variable, which is a calling the random adjective function. So we're going to put a y in here. And let's see how that plays out. So y is calling a random adjective. And we need to bring in a bit of space in front of the word. So if we play that, look at this, we have watching the small and it's, oh, there's some sort of error over here. So I need to find where that error is. And you can see I've got two pluses. I must just take one of those away and let's play that again. And you can see watching the quiet monkey, the hard monkey, the smelly monkey. Each story has got a unique description of the monkey. Now, every story has got to have a hero. So let's get the input prompt, which means we're going to ask the user for information. Input prompt. And now we're going to type name the hero. So we give the hero a name. That will prompt the user to type in a name. And I want to replace the girl with whatever was typed in the input prompt. So we're going to put in, take girl away. And just after that plus, I'm going to type read input. No capital, read input, round brackets, and plus. And that should, whatever was typed in the prompt will be fed into the story. Let's play it. Name the hero. I'm going to type Thomas and press OK. And you can see everything squashed together. Thomas looked. We need a space. We need to separate Thomas and looked from each other. So let's fix that up. We do need to add in a space. So you can see if I type in Thomas, Thomas, OK. And you can see, look, Thomas and looked are stuck together. I need to add in a space in front of the L of looked. Press space bar. And let's try it again, Thomas. And there you can see I've corrected it. I've created a space between Thomas and looked. 
Now, the more you work with code, the more complicated it gets as you get to look at it. And it's very important to be able to make some sort of sense of what you're doing. So let's go a little bit into the commenting and trying to get structure that is meaningful in your code, because that'll make you a really good coder. I find it quite useful to just space things out from each other. So if you decide that you want to add in a little bit of white space, that really does help to separate one idea from another. So if I look at that, it's almost like paragraphs when one would write. And here I'm just going to comment in describing what the hero thought of the mountain, what the, what the hero thought of the mountain. So you can see that's linked to what's above it. He, that is just adding a little bit more space and it seems less cluttered. This has got a lot to do with grouping ideas. So when you add these open spaces, you basically are grouping things like you would when you write in paragraphs. Over here, we're going to have the read input. So we're going to go print, read input, round brackets. That's going to type in the name of the person, which was Thomas in our last story. And we know how much Thomas loved to look at the mountains. So we're going to add in a line that uh, Thomas loved looking at the mountain. And we'll describe the mountain with the random adjective function. And then plus, and then we know it's a mountain. He loved looking at the mountain. He's one of these people who just loves looking at mountains with all the clouds and all coming over it. So that'll be part of our story as well. So let's go ahead and see how this plays out. So we're going to go into play mode. So press on play and we're going to type in the name of our hero, Thomas. And you can see Thomas looked at the big fence. Uh, the, the, Thomas just loved the large mountain. Every time it's typing, Thomas just loved the large mountain as the second line of our story. The random word function just chose large in each one of those cases. Adequately describing the mountain makes me think of Table Mountain. Now I'm thinking of Table Mountain, those beautiful streams running, it down, running down Table Mountain. It's a mountain with its flowing stream. I don't know if any of you have been to see the mountain the streams running down Table Mountain. So let's type in Thomas. Okay, and then we have a good look at this with its flowing stream. And you can see it's soft mountain, loud mountain. We're getting a different adjective each time. Now, I know I always wanted to walk up the mountain. So I'm just going to bring in another bit of space just to space everything out and comment in something about wanting to walk up the mountain. He wanted to walk up the mountain. I don't know if any of you have done Plutter Clip Gorge walking up Table Mountain. It's a real beautiful walk. And let's go to the print part. So we're going to bring in a bit of the story again. Now I'm thinking of swimming because of the streams. So we're going to bring in, he wanted to swim in the waters of the stream. So we'll go read input. Now remember, that's going to bring in the name Thomas, as that was the name I typed in, plus, and we'll go on wanted to swim in in its cool waters. Single quote and semicolon right at the end. So you can see there that's going to bring in Thomas wanted to swim in its cool waters, alluding to the cool waters of the stream. Now let's have a Thomas is wondering about what animals he'll see on the mountain. So he wondered if he would see any animals. And that is commented, so it's not going to be read as code. It's just describing what's the next part of our story. I remember all those dussies on Table Mountain. So let's put in the print, round brackets, and we're going to add in further details of the story. Read input would be the name of the person, plus wondered if he would wondered if he would see any and then we'll use the random function to choose an animal random word round brackets and then we're going to type in animal there 
So he was wondering, Thomas was wondering when he was on the mountain whether he'd see this, that, or another animal. And the computer will choose which animal is then part of the story. And he's wondering if you see that animal walking up the mountain. So mountain, M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N. Don't forget, single quotes, single speech marks over there. And I should put a semicolon right at the end. There we go. Now let's play that name of the hero. And we're going to type in the name. I'll just put Keegan this time. OK. And you see all of our stories coming through. The quiet Keegan looked at the big fence. And you can see there is a whole lot of walking up the mountain. Keegan wondered if he would see any monkey walking up the mountain. Interesting. Now let's see if we can get a variable uh, indicating the animal chosen so what i'm going to do is i'm going to add a little bit of space and then i'm going to declare a variable variable and we'll call it ya y-a like a strange creature ya and that'll be the name of our variable equals and then we're going to use random word and i'm just going to copy it from there random word animal function i'm going to just copy that control c and I'm going to control V. So we've got the random word function over there. And instead of this over here, I'm going to change that to be ya. That is our variable's name, strange name, ya. A ya walking in the mountain. So a ya will be a given animal. I'm thinking of a yeti with ya. I don't know why. Now my story is not entirely making sense. So I'm going to add in another line, print. He really liked looking at the ya, whatever that would be so we'll bring in that variable into this line of our story he liked looking at the ya he liked looking at ya and we'll see how it turns out probably won't make much sense but he really liked looking at a ya okay so we name our hero we can type in thomas again and we just looking he really liked looking at a dog. Can you see? He really liked looking at a dog. He really liked looking at a dog each time he's coming out over there. So the random animal function chose a dog in each case. Now we could have that he's so infatuated with these creatures called yas, whatever the computer chose there, that he really liked looking at the yas. But now we're going to go that he dreamt of owning one. So we'll go that that could be part of our story. After walking up Table Mountain, I wanted to own a Dasi. I thought it would be a wonderful pet, but I don't think they'd make very good pets. So he wanted to own, and then we're going to add in with a plus, a Ya. Own a Ya. Okay, and that's going to bring in that animal chosen. So let's type in the name of our hero, Thomas, with lowercase. That wasn't spelt right. He dreamt of owning a monkey. Yeah, he dreamt of owning a cat. It's changing. The ya is changing every time it calls the animal function. The random word animal function. I want to create a computer-generated verb. So we're going to use the random word in over there. But I'm just typing in ran. And it'll go in here. We'll put in a verb on this line over here. And as you can see, everything's red. So we're just going to type in it over here and then i'm going to comment out so that we can take that line and see it more clearly so we're going to use two forward slashes put them over there forward slash forward slash and that's much more clearer and we're going to add in a little bit of code here random word and we're looking to put a verb in here the computer generated action word verb and We've got that with a plus, and that looks right. So now we can take out these comments. I'm going to now run this story. So I'm going to put our computer into play mode, my program into play mode, clicking on this green button over here. And we click on that, and then it'll read all the various lines of our story. You can see that orange is indicating which line is being read. And I'm going to name the hero in my input box, which we use the input prompt to get. We'll use the same name. And you can see, look, that orange is just indicating that we are on that line. So once I type in Thomas or Tom, then it should go and go on 
reading the code because this is on the input prompt and there you can see it moving through the various lines of code reading out all the five different stories we've gone through this enough and i think it's about trying to make sense of all the code so it's very important to speak to yourself try add in comments to make sure that you have a clear understanding of what you're trying to do and try to analyze all the different lines of code to see if they can fit together nicely by doing that you'll enable yourself to create a story that makes sense and all the different lines seem to fit together in a comprehensive way mine's a very disjointed story again i'm just trying to get you to understand how to do this hope that what i've done here will give you some idea of how you can do it in your experimenting with print to screen i'm sure you can gather that a great storyteller is pretty much like a coder they have to structure a whole lot of ideas together in some logical manner that's basically what i'm trying to get through to you that through analyzing your code and looking at what you've written and try to think very carefully about when and how you're going to use you've got to think very carefully about how you're going to use those random word functions and those random word functions are going to allow you to create computer generated noun verb animal or adjective i hope this has been a useful video to you i would like to just thank you for watching the video and please do subscribe to our youtube channel and uh, good luck with your experimenting